Hello, my name is David with Winning Solutions. We hope this video will be all the help you need. Are you trying to create an access database, but find that it is too much work, or you could be doing something more productive with your time? WSI can do all the hard work for you. Just contact us via the information below this video. We will work with you to determine how much time and money will be needed to build your new database. If you'd prefer to have your database built with .NET, Microsoft SQL Server, so you can run it on your Windows desktop or anywhere in a web browser, we could do that too. Hello everyone and happy 2023. Today's video is a follow-up to an earlier video we made about linking front ends and back ends in Microsoft Access. So we had some requests about, well, okay, what would this look like if you had an SQL Server database on the back end and not just Access? So now we're going to take things up to another level here. So I, I have local SQL Server open here and we're going to be working with the Northwind database. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a database um, it's used in all of Microsoft's uh, sample databases and things like that. So that's probably the best thing we can use. Um, and I've also made a new blank database here, a new blank access database here. And so uh, right off the bat, uh, I, I just felt it'd be better to do with, with a, a clean slate. So there's, there's nothing in here. It's completely empty. We're going to start from scratch. And we're going to go through the process of linking this database, not from Access, like we did in the previous video, and we'll put up the links for that, not from Access, but from SQL Server. Okay, so that's what we're going to do here. So um, a lot of this you've seen before. I'll go through it slowly, uh, assuming you're, you haven't watched the previous video. Uh, we're going to go to External Data, New Data Source. Then we're going to go from database, and instead of selecting Access, we're going to select from Access, SQL Server. Now, there is... A selection here from Azure Database, and Azure is a service that Microsoft has for, amongst other things, hosting SQL Server databases. In SQL Server itself, there are certainly differences between dealing with, for lack of a better word, a native SQL Server database versus one that's being hosted remotely on Azure. So if I'm in SQL Server, there are certain different ways of handling the database. But, but from, from my experience and access to this point of view, it really makes very little difference. So. Uh, rather than jump too far ahead and, and, and make this unnecessarily complicated, I'm just gonna, I'm going to stick with SQL Server. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we're still going to do this link by creating a link table. Now here's where we have this um, this box here: select data source. Now what it's asking us to do is to select an ODBC data source. And ODBC data source, we can make a file data source, we can make it as a file, more commonly we make it as a machine data source, and the first time we make this connection, we're going to use a, what's called a DSN. A DSN stands for a data source name, and that, that's what we're going to use the first time, because that's what we have to use the first time. We can relink the databases later on, but first we have to get the tables into access. And so we have um, code that we can use to relink tables, to, to relink uh, back-end tables, but until we actually have those tables in the database, or, or I should say links to those tables in the database, we're not really going to be able to use it. So first time around, we're going to create a DSN. Now, the problem with creating DS, with using DSNs as opposed to a DSN-less connection, even like I said, even if we're going to use a DSN-less connection, we should start out with a DSN just to get the tables in there. So a DSN is a nice, convenient way to do this, because I, I could select any... Uh, I could select any DSN from my list and not have to enter all the login information again or anything like that. The problem is, is if I were to cop, then copy this front end database to another computer, it's not going to connect because the, the, a machine data source, a user data source cannot be, uh, will not be copied from computer to computer. You, so if you want this to, so if, if you, if you do this process and then copy the front end to another computer and it doesn't work, that's why it's looking for a, for a DSN that's not there. So that's why we generally prefer uh, a DSN-less connection. So um, let's go ahead and uh, system data source is, is not available to us. We'll just go with user data source. Now we're gonna create a new data source and we're gonna select, now we recommend uh, ODBC driver 17 for SQL server rather than the SQL server or the native client. So we're, we're gonna select this, make sure um, this computer is going to have the driver on it because it installs with SQL Server. But any client machines you're going to copy this over to, make sure they have the ODBC 17 driver installed, uh, which is a free download from Microsoft. So make, 
Again, that's another point you got to be aware of. So we're going to click Next. We're going to go to Finish, and this is where we need to put in the, um, the information, uh, the connection information. So uh, we're not going to be real fancy here. Um, this is on a local server. I didn't want to overcomplicate things by using a, a, an SQL server login. So uh, we're just going to name this uh, Test DSN. That way I know, I, I know to remove it later. Um, and then uh, we're going to do this just with the integrated Windows authentication because the database is local. Now, you could certainly, if, you, if it's an SQL server login and you have a particular login and password, uh, then you can use this. Um, so then, yes, if you have an SQL server login, then you type the login and password here. If, uh, for the purposes of this video, it's even a little bit simpler than that because, like I said, the server is on the same machine. So I could just um, use what we call a trusted connection, meaning that... Um, Oh, I see. The database is on this ver on this computer. Okay, I trust you. There's no need for an SQL server login. Once we do that, uh, change default database. Now, again, it should connect and show me all the databases I have here. We're going to use Northwind. Okay, and, um, and that's really all we need to do here. So this this is uh, we did this kind of the simple way: test data source, just test completed correctly, uh, successfully. And uh, so I, I kind of rambled on a little bit here, um, but. Uh, just, just, just to sum up, I'm using a local server, so I didn't need a login and password. If I did need a login and password, you know, I could enter one from SQL Server. Um, perhaps at some point in the future, we'll make a video for Azure, but that kind of complicates things. Unless you're using it, uh, like I said, the databases we work with, we tend to connect to the Azure hosted database as if it was just a regular SQL Server. So that's what I'm going to stick with for now. Uh, okay, after all that, let's uh, click OK. And now we have our test DSN here. So I'm going to click, by the way, that's the convenient thing I mentioned before about having a DSN. Once we've created this, I don't need to go through that process again of selecting the server and logging in. It's now in here and all I have to do, if I wanted to uh, make another database on this computer with the same source, all I would have to do is select this a second time and we'd be right in. So we have that shortcut. Okay, now we're going to select which tables to link. Now the database doesn't have a password on it. And that's, a, that's, that's the other reason I didn't, cho I didn't choose um, a database with an SQL login because, unfortunately, Microsoft, uh, if I did say save password, save password means you don't have to enter the SQL password over and over and over again, um, but it's going to make you save the, it's going to ask you for each individual table. Do you want to save, save the password for categories? Do you want to save it for customers? Do you want to save it for employees? And it's just going to, that's going to take a long time clicking OK all those times. And uh, unfortunately, also, there's no, um, there's no way I, I can, there's no shift click that I can select all of these with. So um, I'm not going to do select all because that's going to give us all these system tables. So I'll just uh, select these individually. There aren't too many of them. And I'm not going to click save password because we don't have a password. It's a local connection. So again, otherwise it would bug us to save passwords for each and every one of these. Uh, almost done here. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to click select OK. And so sometimes if the table doesn't have a primary key or some other unique identifier, it's going to ask you this. Uh, so I, I mean, you generally want to do this in some tables. It doesn't really matter or you could, or you both of these can be the primary. So, it, you know, I, product list, yeah, you want to do product ID, sales totals. Oh, well, no, that's again, a, a query, uh, summary of sales by quarter. So, and so some of these, I mean, they're not queries are coming in as tables, um, but some of them, some of these are probably views. Okay, yes, they're, they're views. So the view is kind of like a, it's kind of like a saved query. All right, so there we are. Just like when we had the access back end, you notice that now we can access these tables, but once again, you see a different icon. Now it's a little different here. Now you have the globe instead of a, a table icon. And again, this arrow pointing to the globe means that the database is linked but it's not an access database that, that, the, that the tables are in the cloud, so to speak. I mean, even though they're on this backend database, in this case, it's on the same computer, uh, but that's the icon that is used. So we can make, um, I'm not, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but we can make a quick form based on the, uh, the product list, let's say. I'm just going to use the uh, form wizard just to, uh, because I mean, it's not a video about creating forms, right? So I'm just going to kind of take the shortcut. Uh, product ID and product name, and um, columns. We can, we can make um, 
a quick form from this. Um, you know, it shows the product IDs and the product names. So that's how you would do this, how you, at least how you would set it up initially. Now, as I mentioned before, we're going to have a problem if we try to copy this to another computer because this, these are connected using a DSN. If I hover over this, you can see DSN equals test DSN. There's nothing that's really telling Access where to look for the back end. It just says look at this DSN, but if you're on a computer that doesn't have that DSN, Access has nowhere to look. So what can we do? Well, this is another reason why I want to start with a clean database. What we often do is in the, um, let's um, figure this form is this form is the main form, right? Product list. So uh, I'm going to go to make that the display form. So that that so in other words that that so this is the form that's going to show on startup. Uh, just because the code I'm going to show you, it's just easier to put into a form. So I, I'm I'm being a little simplistic here. Um, what I want to do is so if I copy this to another computer, the links will still be in here, but I need to tell it what it's linking to. I mean, they're links using a DSN, but if that DSN doesn't exist, you're going to have problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of code, and this code will run uh, when the form loads. And since this is the, um, the form that the default form, it's it's going to basically it's going to start whenever the application starts. Ordinarily, we'll use something a little more fancy. We'll use an auto exec macro, but again, I didn't want to I don't want to overcomplicate things. Uh, that's not the purpose of this video. Um, so yeah, uh, what we want to do is we want to put in code that will relink SQL Server tables if that needs to be done. Okay, so so what I've done is I've I've copied some code from another project, and um, what this is going to do this relink SQL tables. This is going to run when the program starts up, and it's going to tell Access where to get information on the back end from, since presumably we'll be loading it on a computer that doesn't have that DSN. As a matter of fact, ultimately to test. To test this, I'm going to remove the DSN and see if the database still connects. So um, I copy this. We only need to make a few changes. We do need to say what the connection string is. A connection string is basically a string, a string in a particular format uh, that tells the, the location, the server, the database name, any login information. Um, so the, all we need to change is the server and the database. So uh, again, I will trust the connection. Yes, that should be all we need. And so what it's going to do it's going to go through every table in the database and it's going to take that table and set its connection string to this. It's, in doing so, it's going to override the current connection string, which tells it to look for the DSN. So if the DSN is not there, it can go ahead and look at this. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to go ahead. Now, we're not really going to need it right now because we still have the DSN in there. But let's go ahead. Uh, so I'm just going to press play and go through the rest of these. Tables are reconnected. And there we go. Same thing as before, right? We can open the tables. And now if I hover over, see it doesn't, it, before it said DSN equals. It doesn't say that it has our new connection string in it. So let's go back to the DSN for a moment. Reconnect these through the DSN. That, that'll be much quicker because because all I, this time all I have to do is Select the test DSN. I don't have to go. So yeah, so we, we, we're right into the uh, tables. I, I, don't, I didn't have to select the server and the password and all that sort of stuff again. Okay. Okay. So now these are once again connected to the DSN. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to remove the DSN from the computer. So I go to my ODBC data sources and here's our test DSN. We're going to remove it. So this will mimic copying the database to another computer that doesn't have that DSN on it. So let's go ahead and start up the database again. Okay, you see, connection to test DSN because test DSN isn't there. So uh, this kind of removing it just kind of mimics copying this to another, has the same effect of copying this database to another computer that doesn't have that DSN on it. And so it, it's, this is not going to work. It, it doesn't know, the, the, the links are still there, but it doesn't know what to link to. So, okay, now it'll go through. All right, so it's going to debug. It's, well, oh, sorry, it's going to print the table name. 
it's going to refresh the link and end if and it's going to go so let's go ahead and um ta now tables are reconnected and now we're back and so i can go to this form and i can put everything back yeah. anyway but that's uh that's pretty much it now we have a functioning form again okay well okay we don't want this to run every time the form goes so this is this was kind of a you know slap together example uh, and uh, we, we wouldn't put it in a form like this, but again, we'd put it in, in an auto exec type. So, so it only runs once when the, when, the, when the application starts, not every time you open this form. But that's the idea. That, that tells you, so we've gone over how to link to an SQL Server database as a backend and how to relink, how to do it two different ways. We did the first with the DSN. The second way we did it is called a DSN-less connection because now we're not dependent. I removed that DSN that I created earlier, and yet the database still functions. All right, this was a rather long video, but I hope this was uh, informative and helpful. And now you know how to connect the database to an SQL Server backend, or better yet, have us do it for you. Have a good day. Thank you for watching. We hope this video was all the help you needed for your Access database. If you are struggling to create an Access database that does what you need it to do and just want someone to make that happen for you, that is the business we are in. Our contact information is below the video. You can reach out to us and we will work with you to determine how long it will take and how much it will cost to get your database up and going. If the time and cost are acceptable to you, WSI will get to work and make your database vision a reality. Perhaps Microsoft.net? or MS SQL Server would be the better choices for your new database, so it can run on your Windows desktop or anywhere in a web browser. WSI will help you make this determination if you like. Again, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day.